Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today I got a very good video for you guys here. And in all honesty, um, when it comes to Jurassic Park, a lot of creatures that fit in aren't really added. Now, we do know we do have a confirmation that this creature existed in Jurassic World, but again, it apparently went extinct. So, uh, yeah, I'm very disappointed about that. But overall, <clears throat> the Dionysuchus has to be one of my favorite species of... And do we count them as dinosaurs? I don't think we do. I know the Crocodilomorph family is definitely distant from dinosaurs, or but they are relatives nevertheless. But Dionysuchus, Sarcosuchus, and Purosaurus, as well as many other land crocodiles, I would have loved to see in the Jurassic Park franchise because they could actually add that horror aesthetic to the story. I mean, yeah, Jurassic Park is supposed to be kid-friendly, but again, um... We could actually have a horror. You, you know, we need a horror aspect to Jurassic Park. And I think a rated R Jurassic Park movie is definitely needed. Where both people and children get killed off. It really shouldn't matter. But anyway, where would I actually put the Dionysuchus as a whole here? Or any crocodilian, or sorry, prehistoric crocodilian as a whole here. Now, when it comes to Jurassic Park franchise, they don't really have too many water interactions until Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic World. So I think it's best to put a Dionysuchus or any other crocodilomorph in the Jurassic Park 3 franchise. And it's actually important about this is that if you look at Isla Sorna, right, there's a lot of water in the environment. There's a lot of aquatic based areas for a Dionysuchus to be. Now, sure, this might limit its hunting options and may limit prey going towards the water. But again, it'll get a meal one way or another. And plus, this could actually add a lot to the story as a whole here, especially if it's written correctly. You could have characters like, um, sorry if you hear any, uh, stuffiness in me, <laughs> but uh, you could have characters like Billy be someone who, like, you know, takes the eggs of a Dionysuchus rather than a Velociraptor. And I think that maybe he takes the eggs of, instead, a Postosuchus or a Barinosuchus, or a Barinosuchus, instead of a, um, instead of a, uh, what am I saying, instead of a Velociraptor, or Raptor, because let, let's be real, they ain't really Velociraptors. And this could also give a much more horror value to the story, especially when being chased on land by these creatures, like some over-the-top, uh, Dino Croc or Super Gator. If you don't know what those movies are, I suggest you go look them up and have a, have a thrill. They're a sci-fi movie, so they're not very, <laughs> they're not very intelligent based. But again, they're good guilty pleasure movies, in my opinion. And as for the Dinosuchus, Sarcosuchus, or Purusaurus perspective, uh, yeah, um, it's absolutely horrifying. Imagine taking these eggs and the creature actually follows you through the water. You see glimpses of it every now and then as it tries to pop up boom boom and boom every time you see it in a water-based area you actually get that you know that horror feeling inside of you that it's going to pop out at any given moment and we actually see that one of the characters actually spots it but they don't really know what it is here but you know what it is you've seen the creature and then you could have this build up to where you know they're going to um you know they're trying to get away from the pteranodons and then all of a sudden, when a pteranodon goes for the water, it gets snatched at such an astonishing speed that the characters only see a burst of water and the pteranodon go down underneath. You might say, why didn't it go for the humans? You could actually say the pteranodon simply just blocked his path and that it'll get them later. You then get to the boat scene where, you know, you don't see the, um, we don't see the Spinosaurus in this one. No, no, no. That actually comes later. But we these animals are, you know, drinking from the water, and then all of a sudden they back off. Even the likes of Brachiosaurus and even sauropods, I think, were actually being, you know, could have been hunted as well by these, uh, you know, by these creatures. Especially if they got the opportunity to get around that neck for a good amount of time and were able to let go and then let the creature bleed out. But then we see that, the, you know, the parasaurs are drinking water. And then this is where we get the characters actually seeing a Dinosuchus. 
and they realize just how bad of a situation they are in. Billy gets exposed by Alan Grant for taking the eggs of the Dionysuchus. And then, you know, this leads into that whole thing. And then the boat gets attacked by the mother. All right. Now, as for where it could be in other installments, I think that considering that um, Dionysuchus would have definitely been breeding and I guess you could say somewhat cannibalizing each other to a degree here we do know cannibalism is among the croc family and them being able to hunt any creature they want i do think by the events of jurassic world they would have caught a good amount of the anosuchuses here i think it would definitely been a good uh and it definitely would have been a good scene to see and i actually think this should have been shown here as well in jurassic um in jurassic park and jurassic world how do they get most of these creatures over here? Some of these creatures look like it can take 10 to 20 tranks as a whole. But, um, yeah, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> as for Camp Cretaceous, the Yonosuchus will play a minor role. And then in Fallen Kingdom, we see that it gets auctioned off to somebody. And it's pretty much just sleeping in a truck. Then we could get Dominion, where we see the Dionysuchus in someone's backyard as a pet. I mean, what, what else are they going to do with it? I don't even want to think about what a weaponized Dionysuchus could honestly be, in my opinion. Because if you're able to weaponize it and somehow find a way to, like, control it in some capacity, maybe you befriend it or, you know, you raise it as a baby and you teach it to attack certain people, then, yeah, um, it, it, it could work. It could work. Same thing with other creatures like Purusaurus and Sarcosuchus. Oh my gosh, especially Postosuchus and Barinosuchus as well. Dear God, imagine being able to weaponize this as a as a dinosaur. I, I, I mean, or as a prehistoric creature, or as a Pleistocene prehistoric croc. All right, imagine being able to do that, and you're able to sick that thing on somebody. They can't go through water, and they can't go through land either. So you know what's gonna happen, right? They're just gonna they're gonna get ripped apart. There's no if, and, or buts about it. They can't even escape. And I swear, this would have been such a good, horrifying moment as a whole here. Considering the sheer fact that these crocs are some of the most powerful prehistoric creatures to have ever existed in the era of the dinosaurs, I think it is safe to say here that if they're able to, you know, do that whole weaponized dinosaur program, which actually sounds very interesting in my opinion... <clears throat> I think that, oh, sorry, I lost my, oh, sorry, nose. Uh, I think that, <laughs> I think that if they're able to go through with the full-fledged weaponized dinosaur program, that they would be able to do a lot of damage in the franchise as a whole. But anyway, if I think about it, adding these creatures or adding these crocodilomorphs, adding the Dianosuchus, Sarcosuchus, Purusaurus, Rampasuchus, you guys get what I mean. Adding any of these Suchuses from either the Permian period all the way to the Pleistocene period would have been the best the franchise has ever had to offer. But hey, that's going to be all for today, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share with your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you guys have a blessed day. Peace.